You are watching and listening to Chris and Lester to my Die TV on YouTube and your favorite podcasts. Hi everybody, Jerry Taggart here. Now be sure to watch Chris and Lester Till I Die TV by subscribing on YouTube and following them on social media for all the latest Leicester City news and information. Come on you foxes! Like and subscribe now. Right, Chris. All right there. All right, the back. How are we? Good evening, lad and lad, lad, lad it. I'll try that again. Good evening, lad and lad, lad, lad it. No, let's just say good evening, fellow Fox fans. How are you doing? Clean my teeth this morning. Can't do a thing with them. Um, get excited. Premier League football's back. The best football is back. I mean, yes, 10 0, but come on. Do you know what I mean? Uh, we could have given Steve a pair of boots. No respect to him. He'd have got, he'd have got more goals than Kane. Uh, mind you, he'd have got more goals than Kane in his heyday, I tell you. Uh, that that uh, tricky winger. And Brad, well, he, he enjoyed it. But then again, like I say, maybe I'm getting old. Maybe I'm just expecting too much. But I can't be doing with these, uh, these uh, qualifications. Get to the finals, I'll get excited. I don't know about you. But anyway, good evening. How the devil are we all here? Like I say, we've got Premier League back at the weekend. Um, good evening uh, to Doug. How the devil are you, sir? Um, is that working? Or is it one of those nights tonight? I can feel me water. Not going right straight away. It's not going right. Somebody that's just not right in the head. Brad, good evening, sir. Howdy, sir. Howdy. How are you? It's been a while. No, no it has. <laughs> How did you get on without me all this time? <laughs> oh, I, 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 I found ways. I, I went, I went into the quiz. So that that passed some time. That was fun. Well, I tell you what. Talking of that quiz, I think just um, we, 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 we should we should play this for you for a second. Well, well, well done, Brad. Well, well done, sir. Well done. You won. Yeah, yeah. It was a great game. Um, it was over on uh, Rich's Rich Sports Channel. It was against um, Owen. Um, I think it's. I'm going to get slated if I get it wrong. But I think it, it's at Co Co Coyle Owen. Um, if you know him by that, instead, it was a great game. I edged it. I thought it was going to go to penalties, and we know what Leicester fans are like with penalties, but I won it in, in, in the end. So go check it out because it was there's, a great quiz. There's no, there's no edging in this channel, I'll tell you. It's not allowed. That's uh, that's after midnight. <laughs> yeah, and you will see that I got some, uh, I get I get a few uh, questions wrong. Right. They were a bit embarrassing, so you get to laugh at me as well. So don't worry, there is enjoyment on there. Good evening, Steve. We always laugh at Brad in quizzes. Uh, he's finally won one. How the devil are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you very much. Yeah, evening, Steve. Good. Brad, all right, mate. 
Uh, Almighty Blues and Kit, good evening, sir. How are you? Hope you uh, sorted the. Uh, I did. A, I did a, um, a a preview. Well, not with Ankit. It was a bit like Michael Jackson and and uh, Paul McCartney when they did Ebony and Ivory. Totally separate continents, and we were doing this interview. But uh, hopefully, you got it sorted, mate. Jeff, good evening, sir. Uh, from the Philippines. How how are you? How's that? Must be warm over there. What well, that must be. Is it early morning over there yet, or is it still middle of the night? Um, my Blue said, I know you do well in all honesty. Uh, I think that's referring to you, Brad. Um, and he says it's on its way. Right, well, I'm just going to slowly try and bring this up ready for the predictions because everything is running a little bit slow for me. Um, I guess you've missed Premier League football from our conversation, Steve. <laughs> what, what, like me, you weren't a huge fan of the old 10-0. Uh, uh, no, nah, I cannot stand all these league games to get through to the, the big competitions, I think, to be honest, you know... Uh, the players moan that they, uh, they're tired. So I think it's, um, you know, throwing all these games and especially where they don't mean anything, so, you know, San Marino or whatever it is. So, no, nah, not a big fan at all. Or as um, Simon Jordan called them on TalkSport the other day, San Marino. <laughs> he, could, he could probably afford to buy them, uh, if, if truth be known. Well, I'm sorry. Um, were there supporters in the crowd? All you could see was the uh, England supporters. I, I don't think they had that many, did they? And they were at home. I don't think they've. I don't think they've got enough. Do enough people live there to fill Wembley? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, I, I'm being a bit unkind here, but you know, San Marino, Gibraltar, Azerbaijan. Don't mention North Macedonia, but apart from that, these teams <laughs> they're just just making making the numbers up and. Just to say, if you are a fan of North Macedonia, as indeed is Brad, you can see Brad's North Macedonia betting recommendation on our new TikTok channel, which yeah. is LGID TV. Hey, I said it'd win a tournament. I was just wasn't specific enough on which one. So this is the year. I'm good doing a Del Boy. <laughs> That'll be the year. <laughs> that will be the year. Jeff, it's 5 a.m. It's your normal time you get up. I'm glad I don't live in the Philippines. Good God, man. What what, what are you doing? You've got at least another another two hours in bed there. Come on. But uh, have you got your alarm clock ready, Steve? Uh, I've got it. <laughs> I'm not saying that I want to wake up with you in the morning. Don't 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 take me the wrong way. <laughs> but last time Lester had an early kickoff, um, we didn't do very well, did we? No, and I can't see us doing very well this week. Um, I gathered that from your prediction that you sent me through before. The only reason I put that, to be honest, um, I think he's going to set out not for Leicester to win, but I think he's going to set out how to stop Chelsea from winning. And mm. I think that's going to take the edge off Leicester. Because um, the way he picks his formations and the way he does things... He's, he's there to stop Chelsea, not to not to beat Chelsea. That's that's my feeling. I do get that. Do you, Brad? Do you, I mean, that's kind of Brendan, isn't it? In a way, um, it, it's kind of weird. I I'm not going to give anything away, but you just get this gut feeling, and it's going to sound daft, but it, I feel like this is going to be a game where it will literally either go one or two. Ways there's there's no middle ground for me. Um, this is literally either going to be um, a very very big result for Leicester, or it's going to be a very very bad result for Leicester. And I'm just I'm still thinking right now which way I'm going to go. I haven't even had a look at the fixtures because I wanted to enjoy Premier League football being back that much. Um, so I'm actually just. Realising who's playing who, the only one I knew was ours. And if we turn up what we did against Arsenal, yeah, it's not going to go well. No. I've got that feeling as well. So. Uh, to be fair, well, your next two just fixtures, looking back. Um, I'm cooling a goal for the two teams because I cannot stand Arsenal. And I, cannot stand, <laughs> and I cannot stand Tottenham. So. But, <laughs> 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 Sorry, Steve, I couldn't resist it. 
I'll stink by it now. I'll stand by that. Oh, I love oh, I love it. It's gonna get it's gonna get regularly played, is that I'll tell you. And I've I've sent it to a couple of Arsenal fans. But you had a good way. I mean, you know, I said the rumors were that I did bring you in, Steve, because you, you're worse at this than I am. But last week you had a really good week and uh, you actually you've overtaken me, you've pushed me into uh, into bottom place. Um and you got quite a few points there, so you're now only three behind Brad. Um you got the Southampton result right, the Norwich City result right. You see, Brad, when Steve predicts Norwich City, they win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stop it, Steve. Come on, get on with it. Get it right. <laughs> I think it's going to happen again this week. Well, we, we will we'll see. Steve. The I mean, Chelsea, where did you get that Chelsea guess from? You know what I mean? The Chelsea one. Yeah, you you oh, went for Burnley Chelsea draw and and it was right. I mean, this is not. Have you been you know taken over by aliens or something? <laughs> you know, you're not normally this yeah, good. Say, Burnley's <laughs> a hard to, Burnley's a hard team to beat, and I think yes. they play a lot better against the top six clubs. Mm. And um, you know, they they done what they usually do against the top clubs. Yes. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I was I was quite happy with that one. So, Steve, Chelsea. I, I know. Well, I know what way this is going because obviously you do the the other prediction league on the website, lessontillidie dot com, as well. For so I kind of know where you're going with this. But um, which which way are are you going to um, um, go for the for the viewers? I'm going to go for a Chelsea win, um, and I'm going to stick by what I said. I don't think Leicester's going to go out and attack Chelsea. I think Blendon Rodgers is going to set the game up to try and stop Chelsea. And I think mm. that's going to take the edge off Leicester. So I think they, I think they'll struggle this week. No, I, I, I fortunately, I, I am very worried. I'm not going to lie about this. Uh, are you worried, Brad? Yeah, of course I'm worried. It's Chelsea. The top of the league, they're over his favourites to win it. Who wouldn't be worried playing Chelsea? Mm. This is the fixture where either Brendan's going to win a few fans over or we're going to see a particular set of fans that every set of clubs has, by the way. This isn't just the Leicester fans, mm. where if it goes wrong and it goes wrong badly, they're going to come out in their droves and we're going to be feeling like Manchester United fans about Ollie if this goes wrong, to be honest with you. So this is where Brandon, and I think if he gets them players knowing that and there is behind Brandon's ideas and tactics that he's trying to freshen up Leicester, in a sense, with not being so predictable, playing one formation and one dynamic, that I, I actually think he will go for this. I think he'll know this game's bigger than people might think. It's not a free swing. We're 12. I found that out the hard way on the quiz last night, I can tell you that. And <laughs> big up Hank it because that's who I was stepping in for. That's why he knows about the quiz. Um, but this is made this this is this is the game now where we're at that point of the turning point where we come up to a very busy schedule. Do we this is the start now where Leicester have to pull a shock out of it? So I'm backing that. I'm going with my gut and I'm going to go to Leicester win this game. No. Okay. I I'm sticking to my guns. I've just got this feeling that this is going to be the game where Brendan wins a few people over and we go, all right, Brendan, fair dues. This this look this could be the turning point. Well, uh Doug's gone um over a one one draw. Jeff said his hopes he's gonna be a two one Leicester win. Um and Ankit the Chelsea fan has gone two one to to Chelsea. Apparently here Leicester City are unbeaten. In their last three Premier League home matches against Chelsea, uh, yeah, the it's, best it's just at Stamford Bridge. We don't like playing them. Yeah, yeah we just don't like playing them. To 1995, uh, when we were obviously still at Filbur Street, um, and Leicester striker Jamie Vardy is just two goals away from equaling Ian Wright's Premier League record of 93 goals scored after turning 30. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sort of torn with this I, I i don't i am worried like i say um let me just let me just go and get a cloak on so i can put on my best best darth the darth sidious and just say do it 
do it. <laughs> I can never, they can never predict against my own team, though. That's the thing. I, 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 I do understand where, where Steve's coming from with this one. Um, we, we need, it's the early start as well. After the way we turned up against Arsenal, I do hope that the players realise it's a 12.30 kickoff and not, you know, 1.30, and they actually start playing at the right time. But it is a big game. We do tend to do better against the, the, the top six sides. Um, I'm going to go for a draw. I've actually gone for a 2-2 draw uh, in, in the Prediction League on LeicesterDelladie.com. So I'm going to split it there, and we're going to go one each, and I'm going to go for the draw. So, mm, there we go. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's made it nice and fair. Now then, Steve, um, another Steve, Mr. Gerard, taking his first game at Aston Villa up against uh, Brad's favourite uh, manager at Brighton and Hove. Uh, do you see a glorious start to his Premier League campaign, campaign for Stephen Gerrard? Uh, I do. Uh, I don't think he's had much time to do what he wants to do with the players at the moment. But mm. I think uh, the hype of him coming, I think that's going to um, turn the game Aston Villa's way. Um, Brighton are on yeah. a good run, but I think with the hype and the new manager coming in, he's not going to be able to change much at the moment until he finds out no. who can do what and how, he can, how they want him to play. But I think purely on the hype of him coming, I think they'll win this one. So you're going to go for a yeah. Villa, uh, Villa win. Um, Brad... As I mentioned talked again yesterday with Julian, we spoke about the England game. We also spoke about Scottish football. It's rubbish, isn't it? Because managers can't wait to leave mid-season. Brendan to us, um, Stephen Gerrard to Villa. You know, Rangers and Celtic, maybe not that big. Sorry, Doug, if you're still watching. Um, it's, it's, it's always going to be a very bantery debate about Scottish football. Um, but... He's it, quite smart. I'm actually appreciative more of Steven Gerrard than I am probably a lot of these ex-players that have gone to it because, with the greatest respect, that's the sort of level you need to be starting your career. It's like going to... I don't want to sound harsh, but it's, it's probably like going to low-end championship. I, 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 I honestly think the top two out of that, the obvious two, Rangers and Celtic, could probably manage a scrappy championship season. But it's a good place to start your career. You get to see good players and learn off them in that in 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 the league they're in. I'm not talking necessary quality in terms of general. I'm just talking about the league they're in. You're seeing teams of the highest. You're managing the highest caliber there. Let's face it, in Rangers or Celtic. I'm not getting involved in that. Before people come up in the comments, I'm not not a chance. Um, I am. Their, their high quality is like championship level. Uh, yeah, I said that you've got you've got Norwich, so maybe they would do yeah. okay in our Premier well, League. Yeah, but <laughs> my, 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 my point my point more stands on the fact that they're seen as royalty in Scottish football, like man, like yeah. like the big club over here is. You know, is is we've got an an elite elite. Oh, do you think do you think he'll do the job against Brighton, or do you think uh, Mr. Potter will carry on performing the magic? Honestly, it worked. It worked for no lie. Lampard. Don't be honest. Lie to me. <laughs> no, but it worked for Lampard, didn't it? And I know it was Chelsea yeah. he went to, but the effect was probably also not just because it's Chelsea, but the effect was, oh, that's Frank Lampard. There's players in that Villa squad that would have watched Gerard growing up as a kid or got inspiration from him or seen him play and, and, and respect him, and I just think. To continue the long time debate, I think Gerard will do it on a longer basis and will be keeping a job on a more permanent basis than Frank Lampard. So we've solved one argument between them because I generally think he's going to get off to a flyer and beat Brighton. So you're going to go for a Brighton win? Uh, sorry, a Villa, a Villa win as as well. Don't um, swear at me about Potter. <laughs> <laughs> I know you love him. You know, I know you are Graham Potter's love child. Um, yeah, yeah, Graham Potter and Paris have made a great couple, in my opinion. <laughs> they work well together. Yeah. Him and his star player, sign him up. Yeah. Great Villa team. lost five on the trot. Uh, maybe 
maybe that's one of the reasons why um, uh, he, he went. But as um, as Doug was saying on his channel, I, I watched a bit of your show the other day, uh, uh, Doug, on your prediction show, and you were saying it's probably just not on those last five games. It's probably on he hasn't won that many this year, you know, as a whole back end of last season and the start of this season. Brighton, in the meanwhile, are on a bit of a dip. Um, they have only won... No, they haven't won any of the last five. They've got four draws and a loss. Um, and I am bantering with Scottish fans here because I don't rate Scottish football. Congratulations to them for what they did in, in Europe um, in, the, in the World Cup qualifiers midweek. Well done for them for that. It's just... When you've got two big managers in, well, say potentially big managers in one, in in Gerard and of course Rogers leaving mid-season, I just wonder where it leaves Scottish football. But I've got to be totally honest with you, uh, Steve and Brad, I've got this down for a Villa win as well. I can't see. Uh, I think that the Gerard effect is going to really affect this game and I think um, you will see that new manager bounce and like you, you both said you know it's Steven Gerrard it, it, you know he's got that aura about him and he did well at Rangers he stopped Celtic getting the 10 in a row Steve you got it right last week with Burnley getting a point at Chelsea um, I was impressed with you <laughs> and I don't know where you, get, where you were pulling them out from last week um, no. it, you need to go back in the bathroom. You know that if you don't do well this week, <laughs> the bathroom is your happy place. You know. Yeah, it will be yeah, if, I, if you don't do any good this week. But I'm, <laughs> I'm going for Burnley again. Um, I think they're going to be too organised for uh, Crystal Palace. Uh, Palace, I feel, are a side that are in transition. They're trying to pass the ball around. And I think they only play in spasms rather than 90 minutes. Yeah, and I think Burnley will give them a game for 90 minutes. I think they're more organised and I think they will bully them. Uh, so, I'm purely on that basis. And because they got that good result as well, I think it will carry on again this week. Brad, I mean, you've got 10th versus 18th here. Um, Palace won their last two, um, but they've not lost in five. They beat... Um, of course, Man City, and we beat them 2-0. It wasn't just a lucky win. Uh, and, of course, they beat Wolves. Burnley, drawn, lost, drawn, one drawn. What are you going to go for with this one, mate? If Burnley win this game, then everybody except Steve is a complete mug for, Bur for, for Burnley. Because they lose every year, don't they? They have an awful start. And we always change our mind and think this is the year that Sean Dice doesn't work and they go down and then they go and get a result and then they start winning games, don't they? It always happens. They, they fall us every year and we always fall for it. But Steve didn't. He saw them getting a result against Chelsea. And I'm going to agree with Steve. I, I think they actually... It's at home. I think Chris Wood has a big impact. Um, Palace are in good form and it will be difficult, but I just think it's going to be one of them games that... It's the momentum is what wins them it more than on the day results quality wise. If that was a draw against anybody else, I think it's a different outcome. But because it's just typical Burnley esque, yeah. And it was against Chelsea. Um, Why not? Yeah, yeah Burnley. Ant says there players in that Villa squad who never saw Gerard win the league. Did anybody ever see Gerard win the league? I don't think he won the league, did he, Ant? He won the Champions League, <laughs> but he certainly didn't win the Premier League. Uh, Jeff's no, gone no, for a 2 1 Palace win. Uh, Doug's gone 2 0 Palace. Um, Palace are much better away from home. Uh, and Scott's gone for a draw. I, it is at home, which is making me kind of wonder. Um, I, I just. If, if this had been Burnley of a couple of seasons ago, being at home, having just come off that good result against Chelsea, I would have backed them all the way. But I just think Crystal Palace are just proving me so wrong this season. Because I said I thought they'd be struggling near the bottom, possibly being in the bottom three. Just showing I don't know anything about football at all. I'm going to go for the Palace win. I think Palace are going to be too strong for them. And I think... Um, 
Patrick Vieira is proving what a good manager he's going to be. Um, maybe, maybe even as good as Graham Potter, Brad. Who knows? <laughs> and I've ruined his career. Yeah, I have. I've cursed it. Um, another team who are support uh, um, showing off a new manager this weekend, Steve. Newcastle United. Eddie Howe, second or third choice, but seems to be happy to be there. Um, whether he is the man or not, I don't think he's the man long term. But I think he, he'll do a good job for them for the next couple of seasons. Um, Brentford, almost a must win for Newcastle this, isn't it? I think Newcastle will win this weekend, uh, purely because I think Brentford's bubbles burst. I think uh, it's going to be um, a confidence uh, a confidence game for them. But like I say, new manager coming in again. I can't see fireworks, but I can see Newcastle yeah. doing the job. It might only be 1-0, but I think Newcastle uh, will, will beat them purely on Brentford's form at the moment. And Brad, your thoughts? <laughs> I did. this game for Brentford. I I originally looked at it and thought this could be the game that Brentford needs to hold that slide because Newcastle are terrible. Um, I think Brentford fans are probably not going to go into this game as confident as they were probably a week or so ago because after losing to Leicester and Chelsea, you can take that, but they they suffered a knockback in a, in, in the result. Last week, didn't they? No, the week before. You know what I mean? No, yeah, Sunday. yeah, yeah. The week before, the last Premier um, game. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing: we've seen with Spurs that getting in your ninety seventh choice doesn't really bode well for the squad morale. Um, I think Eddie Howe's massively up against it. Uh, and we've seen with Conte: doesn't matter who you really get in when it's crap on the pitch. Excuse my language. Um, um, it doesn't change overnight. You've still got that. You know, the the effect has hit reality with Newcastle fans that until January, this team is what they're lumbered with. And sometimes, it don't matter how good you are as a manager, if the players ain't up for it or they're just not good enough, you're going to be in that bad situation. And I think Brentford will actually scrape a draw out of this. I'm going for a draw between Newcastle and Brentford. I don't think it'll be fireworks like Steve said, and I just don't see either team winning it. I think it'll be a survive against the war. Like Brentford maybe get an early goal and then try and shut it out, and Newcastle get a late draw, but I just can't see him winning it. You know my opinions on his appointment for Newcastle as well, don't you, Chris? So Yeah, yeah. I... I, I... We haven't seen that normal new manager bounce with, with clubs this season. Like you mentioned Conte before. Um, and you made a very good point. If, it, if, it, if it's poo on the pitch, it's poo on the pitch. Um, that said, it's at Newcastle. The fans seem really happy with Eddie Howe. And I think, as I say, he's, he's a two-year manager. Because I think in two years, Newcastle will then, when they've steadied the ship, got some stability um, mm. in the Premier League, They'll be looking to move on, and then I think they'll be looking to 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 bring a big name in. The problem is that you know it, it's Eddie knows he wasn't the first choice, and, and it was ridiculous. Yeah. Maybe that's a bit naivety on the new owner's side. They must have been you know reasonably confident to get an Emery, and and you know you you, you can come out with these things too soon. But Brentford, yeah. Brentford have kind of they've disappointed me because I did say they were going to be the best team. Uh, that was going to of the three that's come up, but they have lost four on the trot. I mean, they beat West Ham, which is no mean feat this season because I think you know they're they've got a good chance of being top four. Um, but then they, again, they lost to Chelsea, but you could argue they maybe deserved a point. Same against us, um, Burnley beat them, and you know, you kind of think, well, come on, you know, if Burnley are beating you. This season, no disrespect to, but well, yeah, you know, Burnley are down there, and then Norwich. So they've been beaten in the last two games by the bottom two, and of course the thing is, if Newcastle beat them, that's three out of the bottom three that will all have beaten them. But it isn't Newcastle, and it is a new manager, and they're going to have however many thousand Geordies 
blowing that ball into the net uh, at the other end. Uh, and I've got to go with Steve here and go for the Newcastle win. Um, purely because, like you say, Steve, Brentford are on, on, on a dangerous slide at the moment. And I think I think they'll be wishing. I don't know. Would you would you say if you were in in Brentford's position with the run you've had, although they're down there, Newcastle are probably not the team that you want to uh, be facing. No, you 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 wouldn't want to face Newcastle uh, at the moment uh, because purely on the form that you're playing, you'd want to be playing against the one of the top four, top five teams because I can't see them getting motivated for Newcastle, which might be a disrespect for. Brentford, but I can't see him worrying Newcastle if that makes sense. Yes. Um, so purely on that reason, I think Newcastle, you know, are going to win probably because they got the new manager. You'll see them playing a different style. I think. Mm. Um, I think it was a bit. I, I, I just, I just still stand by the basis that, that it's still dross on the pitch. We've seen it with Conte, and I just don't think he excites. Newcastle fans as much as they actually think I think they just because there was a lot of negativity at the first thing and I think maybe that realization of oh yeah we sacked Steve Bruce and they had three what three games was it without him and they didn't get anything that that I know there were people say oh caretaker manager but at the end of the day that was still 11 players going out on the pitch Sometimes it's just not that simple. I, I I think Newcastle fans have maybe started to come around more for the fact that it's, oh yeah, eighteen month contract. He's definitely here to stabilise and do a Bournemouth. But you've got to remember, we're talking about a man whose transfer activity means spending twenty million on Dominic Solanke. Before Joe Linton was bad, just be careful with his spending. Shot. These owners need to not trust him with too much money in the transfer window because he's not that bright at times. Unless it's from his back staff, some of his signings have been shocking. Let's remember that as well. That, well you've, got to, you've got to take into account now. I know you know that they've gone into the realms of the, the richest club in the uh, in the world and that, but you know you got. I think you'll struggle by getting individual players in, like Ronaldo going back to Man United. Mm. You know you got the same thing there. I don't think one player, two player three big stars are going to change their Newcastle play. I think it's more five or six team players that are not with so much high profile that will make Newcastle play a lot better than buying and spending big on so-called names. And I think that's where some of the clubs have gone down the route and and, and they've suffered that way. Yeah. Anthony, welcome along, mate. How are you? You've gone for a, a Chelsea win. Uh, even as an Arsenal fan, a couple of us here probably wouldn't argue with you on that one. Um, this is Leicester Till I Die, and we're going to be right back. But I'm just going to let you know where you can watch and listen to it. <laughs> Listen on your favourite podcast platform or ask your smart speaker to play the podcast Lester Till I Die. Subscribe, like, follow and join in now. Is it working at your end? Is it isn't working at my end at all? Yeah, it played my end, mate. That, that, that came up on my screen. Uh, okay, yeah. so uh, we're up to the next game, which is a Norwich against Southampton, and yet another new manager making his debut. And like the other two, Steve, at home. Let's be having him, eh? Yeah, um, to be fair, I don't think the new manager is going to do anything different to um, the way Norwich are at the moment. Um, he wasn't having much success at the Villa. And I can't see with the players that he's got in the squad there how he can change it to, you know, kick mm. off with fireworks. But they're a team that try and play all the time, Norwich. And I think 
purely on this one. I think he'll be a draw this one. Okay, so you are going on for a draw. Uh, it was a quick appointment, Brad, wasn't it? Have they have Norwich rushed into this? You get tired of being a yo-yo club, don't you? West Brom kind of made a meme out of it. Fair play, but no one's no one, and this is factual. Nobody has been worse than Norwich at doing it. They've set they've set a record the last time, and they're going to add to it this season. But there's potential, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. You know, Jack Grealish aside, and he came on through the development of playing under Dean Smith. And there's an argument that's saying that Campwell's head is elsewhere and that's Norwich's starlet youngs that they've got, uh, along with a, a few other names um, that are just evading me. And we've, we've seen it, you know, a lot of people went, Oh, Villa can't be a one-man team. They'll, they'll go straight back down. But, you know, relying on Jack Grealish as much as they may have been, whatever stats show up that year, he managed a, a team um, of players that probably didn't think they'd get the chance to play in the Premier League. There's probably a few of them players that the dare dream that they'd make the Premier League. And that's no disrespect to them, what they do on the pitch or a talent, but they probably never thought, They'd see themselves getting selected like they were, and 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 then especially given the circumstances of their first season, and I and I like him as a manager. I genuinely do. I know he's managed Villa, and it, it pains me a bit to say it, but I do like him as a manager. I, I don't think he's going to correct anything overnight. I I but I do think he's going to find a way to stabilise Norwich, and I do think they'll get off with a bit of a bang. But I do agree with Steve. I've got a high scoring draw. Does anyone notice that to keep looking down? It's, I haven't done the long ball yet, so I've made my predictions for scores there. So I'm referring to that to make sure I'm sticking to them. So yeah, I've got <laughs> I've got a draw. I, I think this will be yeah, something we'll see good out of Norwich. It'll be Doug's a blip, gone maybe. For but... a, Doug's gone for a two 0 Southampton win, and and Doug, yes. When did uh, when did Steve start with a D? In my world, mate. In my world, it uh, it is tonight. It, it was B. For a while earlier, I <laughs> put the wrong one in altogether. Look, you know, I'm 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 useless at this. I never I never profound to be professional. But look on this game, um, I I think it was a panic a panic um, appointment. I think they got egg on the face Norwich because I think they'd made the decision um, before last week's match uh, against Brentford that they were going to get rid of. Uh, Farkin and but he, he done. I, in my opinion, it was another one of those West ha uh, West Brom type sackings from the other season. What else could he have done with what he's being given? Um, you know, it's not like they've gone out and made any huge signings. Uh, they've you know, they're, they're, they're losing the odd player every season. I don't know what more the guy could have done. And I think to go and say, right, well, we're going to sack him after this. Weekend that kind of maybe sums up where Norwich are in their own minds in the fact that they think they're going to lose the game before they even played it. They then went out and won, and I think they sort of went, "Oh shit, we've still got to go ahead with this now, though everything's in place. Who do we get in? Oh, you know, Dean's, you know, he's, he's kept um, Villa up that season. Didn't have a bad run, got them to a cup. I think it was a bit of a rush job, to be honest with you. And Southampton, they've only lost once. In uh, the last five, and in fairness, that was to Chelsea. Uh, so you know, you can't really hold that against them. They beat Leeds, they drew with Burnley, um, they beat Watford, and they beat the aforementioned Aston Villa. And I think they're going on a bit of a good run. They're, they're one place behind us and one point behind us in 13th. I'm going for a Southampton away win, and I think they're on a, a bit of a run. Now, then, we have got um. Mr. Ranieri up against um, a certain little bus driver. Let's see if this one works. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. Ollie. You need some driving lessons, I feel. Steve. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the old the old timer in Claudio, um, he's taking on a bit of a poison chalice here. Can he get anything at home to um, to to Ollie's uh, Manchester United? 
I think it will, to be honest. I've got I've got this feeling. Um, I watched uh, the reaction with Cristiano Ronaldo in midweek uh, when he was throwing a, his bottle out the pram with Portugal, and I think it's going to cause a, l- a lot of frustration. And I think that more the game goes on and Man United haven't scored, I think uh, Watford will come out on top. Right, so you are going for a Watford win. Um, you know, normally I look at some of your predictions, Steve, and wonder about it. But after last week, I'm thinking, mm, should I be copying you? <laughs> Brad, wheels on the bus, are they coming off? No, I'm not falling for it. I did it. We, we, we did it with Burnley. I missed the bus figuratively and literally in this case. Got fooled. <laughs> fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Now, this is Oli does this every year as well, doesn't he? He has a good run of results. Fans don't really talk about him. They go on a bad run. He's out of a job. 16 managers are taking over. And then all of a sudden, they get a nice big win or a shock win against a hard opposition. And all of a sudden, everybody's sunshine and roses again at Manchester United. And then it's going to be like this. Oli needs this more than uh, than than Ranieri does. Because let's face it, it doesn't matter who or what result he gets at Watford. They could just get bored and sack him. They could go, how oh, do I waste half of three million today? We could sack a manager again. Let's do it. We've seen that with Watford. It doesn't matter their results. And this is where I think Manchester United get a big result because Ronaldo just won't stand for, in, in the, to the greatest respect, that arrogance on the pitch will not stand them labouring to a scruffy draw or losing to Watford. He, I, I can see him having a big impact on this game. So, yeah, man new for me, mate. I have to say, um, let me just put you in there, Brad. Get it right with a B. Um, I haven't agreed with you much this this week, have I? And am I going to, for this game, Watford won one in five. Um, and that was that surprise win against Everton. I mean, you know, it was a draw up until about the last two minutes. But they got the win. They've lost four of those. Ranieri, I think, was the wrong manager for them. I obviously love the guy to bits, but, you know, Watford, did anybody at Watford sit down when they were thinking about taking Claudio on? And like I say, I love him to bits and think, oh, did he, how did he do when he went to try and keep Fulham up? <laughs> He's not the sort of manager that can go in and to keep a team up, I don't think. I think he goes into a team, takes over a, a reasonably good team and makes them better for a couple of seasons. And then that's it. He ends up getting sacked and moving on and doing the same thing somewhere else. So he's the wrong manager for Watford. Like you said, Brad, Watford are just going to um, get bored with him and, and probably sack him. Man United, yeah, they've only won one in five. But that was against Tottenham. Um they lost, obviously, to Man City and, and well, it, it was... I don't know why they turned up, to be honest with you, for that. They got stuffed by Liverpool, but I can't see Man United, like you say, going another game. And, and I don't think Ronaldo will, will, will let them. Um, there's all the talk now. It's gone from Brendan to, on to Zidane. is going to be taken over. But I think this is going to be a Man United win, purely because... I think just Watford are just that bad and they haven't got the right manager in there. And that'll probably yeah. get me a lot of hate. <laughs> are, are Man United going to be hungry? You know, they've had a week off. Uh, some of the players are coming back. A lot of the players, which you get the feel about, don't want Oli as manager. So are they hungry enough to wipe out Watford or are they just going to turn up and, you know... But when you look at what's on paper there, and it's a good point that, Steve, but I think when you look at what's on paper, they shouldn't need... To, I mean, they should be able to turn up with that team and do to Watford what Man City did to them. And that's, like I say, a dog with a with a squeaky toy and just, just play with them. Now, we know necessarily they won't do because, you know, they haven't got, you know, the leadership or, or the coaching staff, but... They shouldn't be losing games like this, should they, Brad? No, they they really shouldn't. And I think, Steve, yeah, you definitely make some really good points there. And, you know, they always say, don't they, the infamous saying is there's no smoke without fire. My thing is, if you're a manager, and to pinch an infamous saying that Chris likes to use a bit, 
from from the outside looking in, you know, you 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 might be as a Dan and hearing your name linked with this job. Maybe a Brendan Rogers who's linked with every team in the Premier League. And you might see this going on, and you might see how this talk and whispers going around and people sending you a message saying, Oh yeah. Or a player going, oh, I speak to so-and-so on their team and they're saying this about Ollie. Whether they're or not, don't matter. We know people are private lives, don't give a stuff what they think, but we know it also goes on. Football is a football and they're the mates with other people, clubs. It's not the same sort of game it used to be in that respect. And it's just, I just can't see how, if a manager like that is thinking of coming in and these players are hearing these rumours, whether they like to admit it or not, or come out and say they hear it or not, if they don't come out and perform against Watford and get beat and they down tools and you're a manager like this and goes, so what happens if after six months they don't like my regime and the way I run things? Are they going to do that to me? I don't want to do that to my career. I'm not doing too bad here at Real Madrid. I think there's players out there and not just Ronaldo, he's just an obvious one, that have too much in themselves to go, I'm not, I'd rather win and watch them get replaced and lose on purpose to get someone on the side. Mm. You know, why, I, why, I just think they've got too much. Let's not forget those rumours were going around about this to Claudio. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. It makes you think, why did he go home to see his family? Has he gone, has he gone home to say, oh, I've had enough and, you know, they're not playing for me. Is he mm. going to tell him? Yeah, you, 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 know, you look at things like that and you, you think about it. Should he have stayed on the training ground trying to think of better ways of getting the players and the team to play? Handling the big names because I don't think he can handle the big names. Mm-hmm. You look at Pogba when he got sent off. He got sent off. He walked off the pitch with a smirk on his face. And you think yeah. to yourself, I mean, there, I mean, there, there is one thing that Ollie could do that would maybe shock people, and I, I just cannot see it doing because we know he is all about Manchester United and just see he's like a puppy with his big eyes every time he's talking about them, even when they don't play well. He's there with a smile on his face and big wide eyes. But imagine if he came out and just went, say, say, say they win against Watford and they win really well and they played really well. And all he's sat there going, that's not what I was hoping to play. And they've done it, you know what I mean? Like, because you sometimes see teams get together and a few players that don't like the manager. And we hear all these stories that are apparently about the coaches and what they think of the level of it. And they go out and play away and win, but nobody actually knows that's not what Ollie told them to do. It's what they decided to do on their own. If Ollie turned around and went, yeah, we won the game, but I know exactly what's going on at this club now. I've seen it with Mary and I's, um, so I'd like to resign. I announced never, my record. You know, just he's something... never going to resign, though, because he's never going to get a penalty. I know, if but you know what I mean? That, that, would, that would be yeah. the way that would tell you... If, if he wasn't any connection to Manchester United and did that... I reckon you could do it. Two, two things that, that yeah. I, I would say about this game is, A, last time there was an international break, look how they played when they came back, because that was when they played us. Uh, Slight Steve said, you know, he has gone away um, to, to, to um, uh, have, a, have a break during the international break. Obviously, maybe you know the players did as well. Maybe that's what they need. You know, sometimes you know we've said about how many games they've played. Yes, I don't think he can necessarily handle the big names, but I also think, well, you know, we we, we say we've said this about Ollie for the last few seasons, and yet, you know, he got them to second one year, he got them to fourth one year. He kind of, you know, doesn't quite make it, but yeah, I just. <sighs> Yeah, I, I I think you'll be there till the end of the season. I, I honestly do because uh, I, whoever I think they go for won't get rid of him until uh, or won't want to come in until they finish their season, possibly. But um, well, we shall see. It will be an interesting one. And I, and I, and as I say, I'm just thinking: Does Steve know something I don't? And <laughs> do I swap it to a Watford win? But I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with uh, with with Man United. Um, Wolves versus West Ham, Steve. The Battle of the W's. Um, West Ham. I was on. I was on a show, and if you go onto the uh, onto the channel, Leicester Till I Die TV on YouTube, I've uploaded it. We were comparing the current West Ham squad 
with the Leicester squad of 2015-16 when obviously we won the league. Um, we were comparing it in a way as, you know, West Ham are the surprise package, or maybe not a surprise package this season. I don't know if they can actually win it, but I, I would I think they can possibly get top four with the way Man United are playing. And I, I hope they do, because I like to see teams like that do well. Are they going to start it off with, with a win uh, away at Wolves, though, Steve? I think they will. I think, you know, you go back to comparing when Leicester won the, uh, the uh, you know, the Championship, well, the, the Premier League. Mm. Leicester won the Premier League because they played the same way week in, week out with everybody for And I think that's exactly what West Ham are doing at the moment. They're yeah. not changing the style of play. They're not changing uh, to suit the opposition. They're just going out and playing as they are, West Ham. <laughs> And they're on the same kind of run that Leicester was on. And you're going to know what West Ham are doing, but it's how to stop West Ham because they're in such a good flow. And because mm. everybody's firing all on, you know, the top cylinders, I think it's going to be the same season for West Ham that it was for for Leicester. I can't see him winning it, though, but I can see him doing really well. And I can yeah. see him playing the same way every week, which is refreshing. I really like West Ham this year. I do, and I've got to be honest, like I say, anybody that can go in and break that so-called, you know, ESL six up would be, you know, for me, they get my vote every time. And, you know, I've nothing particularly against West Ham. The owners, you know, have, have, nobody particularly likes the owners, but they were really good after, obviously, the tragedy with the uh, without with, with Vichai. But I, I just think... They are playing really well. Four, four out of the last five wins, Brad. Um, they, they lost to Brentford, which was obviously surprising that, but they went on to beat Everton, uh, beat Tottenham, beat Villa, and uh, obviously the last minute, you know, the late winner against Liverpool. And Wolves, surprising me, I didn't think they'd be doing this well with the new manager, but they've won three of the last five themselves. So it might be quite close. Yeah, yeah. Um, it took a couple of games to set up, probably about four or five games, but it seems that Mr. Large, or however you say his name, is um, getting walls ticking again. Um, I can't remember what nationality is, so I don't want to do him um, a disservice, but when we was building that, um, that, that 11 that we built on the show, Chris, I mentioned him from Wolves. The, I think he's Korean. I don't want to be wrong. Um, Wang, his name is, I think it is. I think he's got a name. Sometimes, like someone will tell me in the Careful. comments who it is. Careful. Yeah, he, he, seems, <laughs> he seems to be a very good investment from their, from their perspective of things. Um, but West Ham are very similar to, to, to Leicester of that season. And they've just got to be able to do what Leicester were able to avoid, uh, and that is get a big injury. Mm. Because they had the same problem that Leicester were praying on not happening, and that was the squad debt. West Ham fans will tell you, and I agree with them, they've probably got a very good, wholesome group of players like Leicester, not just the 11, but maybe three or four on the bench. But you just know, relying on, say, one of them bench players for, say, an Antonio for five, six, nine weeks, something like that. That's detrimental to West Ham season. Hands down, if them or a Suchek gets injured, because they've got more than just one now, West Ham, which is great to see, but they've also got, you know, it was a Vardy or a drink water, wasn't it? And our season went in. Titan and Akante, obviously, and Mares. If one of them got injured, it would have greatly changed the aspect of our season. I really do feel if they were out for a, a long period. I know we coped with Vardy for a bit in that, but it, that was, that was what, three, four games at most? Mm. It, you know, a long, long period could just, could do them. But the form they're in, I can't look past the a West Ham when they're on fire at the moment. And it, no. They are, everything they touch turns to gold pretty much at the moment. So whilst Wolves are doing well, um, I do think West Ham are going to come out of this one with, with, with three points. Sorry, Steve, I didn't make a note of which way you went at the end. Sorry. West Ham, mate. You went for West Ham. Yeah. Um, I'm almost tempted um, to maybe go for Wolves, just to be different to you two, as I need to, I need to grab some points to catch you up. Um, the, 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 the West Ham fans said at the start of the season, 
a lot of their season would depend, as Brad just touched on their injuries, and especially to Antonio. Um, if he gets injured, they haven't got the huge squad like Leicester did. They are in Europe, which Leicester weren't, but they're on such a run at the moment. They're doing well in Europe. They're virtually through the group, um, if not... I know. I think they. I think they are. They're not quite through yet, but um, they're doing well in Europe. They've got a good, easy group, but you've got to you got to beat them though. They're doing well in the league, um, but Wolves are surprising me. Like I say, you know, they did lose last time out, Wolves to Crystal Palace, um, but they did beat Everton. They drew with Leaves. Leaves. <laughs> Leeds as well. They, they, they drew both of them, probably playing two teams. That's why they didn't win. <laughs> they beat Villa and uh, they beat Newcastle. I am going to be different to you two because uh, I'm actually going to go for a draw because it's at, it's at Molyneux and Wolves, I say, have been surprising. And um, I, yeah, I think, I think they're going to, to, to hold West Ham and, and, and get a point there. Oh, Steve, is it worth me even coming to you for this game? No. <laughs> uh, Liverpool all the way. I'm going to say, I'm, going to say, I'm just going to put you in, you in there, Steve. Uh, let's just, we'll take that as a given. We'll take yeah, that. Uh, and anybody who watches last week's will, will know why. I don't know. Am I? Let me just see if I've still got, no, I haven't got uh, your quote now. I've taken it down. <laughs> but um, but no, yeah, good, let's. Good. Uh, Liverpool are too strong for them. Um, yeah. You know, I think uh, Arsenal are trying to play the Man City way. Uh, if you look at the uh, the two managers on on the sideline, I think that I think he's trying to become, you know, something he's not. And mm. I, just don't, I just don't like the arrogance of the Arsenal, you know, the, the, even the players on the pitch. So, uh, yeah, Liverpool all the way. I must admit, I, I, there is an arrogance about the Arsenal fans as well. And I think that came to light when, you know, with the Madison affair at the start of the, uh, at the start of the season, when, you know, I mean, had the bad season that they had, all the Arsenal fans still thought that Madison would walk barefoot over broken glass to, um, to go there. Uh, but, you know, that, that, that I say to me, that's the arrogance of them. But um, Brad, do you see uh, Arsenal continuing the process or do you see Liverpool knocking them back down a peg or two? You know what, it only feels like five minutes ago we were talking about another team that had a, probably a smaller section, but still a section of fans that changed their mind about the manager more times than the bloody weather in Britain. Um, because guess what? All them ones that are waiting, just waiting to bite and say Ollie out, uh, Ollie out. That's how similar they are. Arteta out and not to trust mm. the process again. It, it happens because Liverpool are rampant. They're doing well in all formats of the competition. Um, they're looking really good. Um, they'll probably not really be too bothered, but they'll be looking for the likes of Chelsea and Man City to slip up again and get themselves right in there with, with another title opportunity. Um, because obviously questions were asked. The Van Dijk excuse, as I call it, last season needs to be proved. Um, I've said that about Liverpool. I don't think they will win the league, but I think they have to do really well to prove that they, how key Van Dijk is to them in a weird way. And I just don't... And this is where it collapses and all of a sudden Arteta's process get in the bin again. For some Arsenal fans, um, so yeah, Liverpool, mate. You're going for Liverpool as well. Um, yeah. let me just put you in there. Um, stick a B, there we go. Um, yeah, I, 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 oh, I can't see anything other than that to be honest with you. Uh, Anthony, um, being an Arsenal fan, he's gone for a 2 2. Um, Scott, Scott thinks it's going to be an Arsenal uh, win. Um, I just, I, I can't. I've got, I've got, I've got to make the full house. To be honest with you, I can't see anything other than a, a, a Liverpool win. And 
to be totally honest with you, I'm a bit like you on this one, Steve. I didn't used to. I used to quite like Arsenal when Wenger was in charge and he first went there. I thought they were a joy to watch. It was nice to watch. You know, when they weren't playing left, it was nice to watch football. But I just don't like so the, not all the fans because some of the fans are decent. Sorry, Anthony, but a lot of the fans they did annoy me with their pre-season. Uh, arrogance and and I'd love Liverpool to 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 do it over them. So I'm with you on that one, Steve. Um, mm. And that's it for the Saturday. Uh, that's live on Sky Sports Liverpool Arsenal. So it's the late kickoff on on the Saturday, and we will be back very very quickly. And uh, we'll be talking about uh, the Sunday games. But this is what's coming up Friday night with us. <laughs> Is Craig's joining me on the seven o'clock on Friday to do the preview show of Leicester versus Chelsea? And Craig will be doing his um joint 11, a combined 11. I don't do those because, as anybody who watched the West, the uh, the West Ham show the other day, I, I just picked 11 Leicester players. <laughs> that's that's the loyalty in me. But seven o'clock on Friday, myself and Craig, and we are doing the uh, prediction show, as I say. Um, Steve, first uh, game on the Sunday, Man City, who uh, are sitting there in second. They've only lost one in five, which was, uh, as I say, the Crystal Palace result, which was a bit of a surprise. Uh, they walked against Man United last week, uh, so well, last game, and, you know, the billion pound man. Didn't even get on the pitch. Um, can you see anything other than a Man City win here against an Everton side? No. Uh, on this one, purely, I think it's the size of the pitch. I really? think uh, yeah. Everton, you know, they, they their pitch is not so big. They play compact in there and they, they can move forward in their little groups. But I think the spaces will be too big for them at Man City. And I think that'll suit Man City passing in between their players. I think they'll sit... And I can't see him breaking up dead again because the size of the pitch and causing Man City any problems. Mm. Good evening, Terry. He's just a little bit behind us. He's saying he hopes Liverpool uh, win Aston Villa at uh, Aston Villa. Arsenal, uh, fan TP, so, so boring lately. Um, Brad, Jamari Gray, um, just I'm good again. They normally do, don't they? It's not going as well as maybe Rafa was hoping. Again, another appointment that a lot of sectional fans aren't too thrilled about. A lot of them more just because he managed Liverpool, pure and simply. It's got nothing to do with him as a person or his managerial credentials. It's just the fact that he managed Liverpool. But each to their own, that's how fans want to be. It's passion, I get it. Um but yeah, I, I feel this might be a bit of a stink for him. Uh, I think Manchester United get back to winning ways and comfortably. So Man City are going to win this for me. OK, let's put you in there with your B and I'll straight away add my C because I can't see it happening either. And and all those, uh, all those, well, not all those, there was only a few Leicester fans who would say, well, we should have kept hold of Demari Gray. Yeah, Why? Yeah, he had a couple of good games. Yeah, yeah, he had a couple of good games, which let's face it, he did for Leicester, and then then he was Demari Gray again. Uh, Doug's going uh, City three nil, quite emphatic for him there. And we've got uh, the last game on the Sunday again, which is on Sky Sports, and I can guess. Well, let's just play this, shall we, Steve? I found it. Uh, to be fair, your next two fixtures, um, I'm cooling a goal for. The two teams because I cannot stand Arsenal. And I, cannot stand, <laughs> and I cannot stand Tottenham. So, but I love it, Steve. I absolutely, I love, as Kevin Keegan said, I love it. I love it. Um, Leeds Tottenham. Uh, Conte's in at Tottenham. Not had the best of starts. Um, Maybe he's realising it, it's not the job that he thought it was. And, you know, it, which Harry Kane's going to turn up, the one that, you know, scored four because there was a there was a 
um, a target that he could go for or, or sort of the Harry Kane that we've been seeing on and off all season? You'll see tomorrow, you'll see Harry Kane walking around the pitch. You won't see yeah. Harry Kane busting a, a gut to get in there and doing whatever. Harry Kane will play for Tottenham like he, like he does every week. Um, I wouldn't like to play Leeds because Leeds are organised and Leeds do break, um, you know, as, as, a, as a team. And I think purely of that and the way Tottenham are, I think, um, and I hope that Leeds will win and I think they'll win 2 0. Right. So, um, again, I'm not totally, I'm going to not argue, Steve. I'm not totally um, surprised you've gone for that. Uh, Brad, how do you see this going? I mean, Tottenham, they're actually sat in ninth at the moment. I um, mean, they were top after a couple of weeks, but, you know, they lost to West Ham and United um, quite, Man United quite easily. They got a draw, nil nil boring draw with Everton last time out. Leeds, Slowly turning it round. Watford win. Southampton loss. Wolves draw. Uh, Norwich win. And obviously the draw against us last week. But they proved last week, you know, they're not, um, you know, they're not, they're not going to be anybody's sort of walkovers this season again. No, they're, they're, they're not. But I can tell you this for nothing from what I've seen of Conte as a manager. If Harry Kane. After the week he's had in international football and the few weeks that he's had to work with Conte, or maybe a week and a bit, given he was away, obviously, for the internationals. Um, but if he struts around that pitch and plays the way he's been playing, then I'm telling you this now, he won't wear a Spurs shirt for long. It'll be gone in January with Conte there. Because let's face it, Conte has had... Uh, that's had Daniel Levy over a barrel when they came back in for him. When he done knew he didn't do right. Because I can't swear and I won't swear um, more than what I already have earlier. Um, but I think he gets the effect. I think he gets it right. I can't see Harry Kane wanting to mess this up too much because he knows Conte will not be afraid to put him on the bench. He'll do it with an ego. He'll do it with a grouch. He'll put him on the bench. He'll... He, he just he can't not turn up. Harry Kane will now get it. He's got his wish. He's got an half decent manager. But we're talking about a club mate that if you look at it on the principle, fans maybe had turned against him at this point, but they essentially sacked Jose. Let's face it, they were given the excuse by the ESL to sack him because he decided I don't want to manage a side that wants to be a part of something like that. They mess around Conte to then grovel and get him back. And they give a burnt-out manager, a burnt-out squad, an absolute burnt-out manager who spent every ounce of energy to get them to the Champions League final and lose it. No money. And then wondered why they kept burning out and had a terrible start to the season originally. That's where the biggest problem is with Spurs. And I just, I just feel that this has to go for the Spurs. Otherwise, they're just going to stay on this, rinse and repeat, and they'll become known as what for 2.0 with how they get rid of managers. So, I don't know. I like Steve's psychological game he plays by going for the underdogs. I like it because it's working in his favour. <laughs> so, I'm trying it by going for my underdog and saying that Spurs are going to win this game. Oh, Brad, 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 Brad. Um... Do you know what? I think I, you you make you make you summed it up for me perfectly. Then Brad, that Conte has got Spurs over a barrel. Um, I think Levy is being pushed out a little bit because I don't know. I can't think of his name, but they've got this director of football in. I think he was the one that went and said we're, we're getting rid of Nuno. We know Nuno was the wrong manager. Uh, he was the wrong manager from the start. And I don't think the players had had respect for him. Um, and you know, I just 
I, I, he wasn't the manager that could go in, and you know we said earlier that you know that if 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 you poo on the pitch, it doesn't matter who the manager is. But you no, know, with that squad, they shouldn't be poo on the pitch. They should be reasonably good and up there fighting for a top six place, uh, if not oh. top four yet. Conte's come in, and you know he's gone to the new director of football and said, "Right, you want me now." This is what I want, you know. I'm doing you a favor by coming. You're not doing me a favor by offering me this job because you know managers get sacked these days and they could have to work again. Nuno doesn't have to work again if he doesn't want to. So he's in no rush to get back in. And I think he can basically rule the roost there. And like you said, he won't take any stick off off Harry Kane. And <sighs> I, I. I I think it's going to be a Spurs win, unfortunately, which is why I was going Brad, 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 because I, I was hoping I wouldn't have to agree with you. But uh, <laughs> I am having to agree with you. I was tempted towards the draw, but I just think Conte, um, he won't take any prisoners as manager there. You know, he's been there, seen it, done it. Thank you, Doug. That is the um, uh, uh, director of football at Spurs. Um and I think I think you know he's make you know he's taking going to take Daniel Levy out of the spotlight, and um, I think he's telling Daniel Levy what to do as well now, uh, which is probably what Spurs needed in fairness. So I'm agreeing with you there. So let's just have a quick run through here. Leicester, Chelsea, we couldn't agree on. Uh, Brad sticking with his low T. Steve is probably being the honest one out of the three of us. <laughs> I'm just sort of getting the splinters in me bum. But we all, having said that, then agreed that Villa would uh, beat um, uh, Mr. Potter Albion. And Burnley, Chelsea, uh, Crystal Palace, you two disagreed with me, or I disagreed with you two, whichever way you want to look at it. So that one could be interesting. Newcastle, Brentford, a bit of difference of opinion there. Uh, Norwich, will they get that draw? I don't think so. I think Southampton will, will, will do them over. Steve, and this is the big call. And, you know, Steve, are you sure you don't want to swap your choice of going for Watford there? No, no, no. I'm happy with that. And I think you'll be surprised on uh, on Saturday with the, uh, with the result. Well, I'm going to play this for you, Steve. And then you can come back and bite me next week <laughs> if you get it right. <laughs> Apologize, I'm continue. That is the new. I cannot be serious. For you for next week. <laughs> you, you, you know what, Steve? I suddenly really want Watford to win this game, just so you can throw it back at him, mate. Just for that, because the amount of times a stick he gives all of us on air is really nice to the guests. So I really hope you win now. I don't care that I've gone Manchester United. I hope Watford win. <laughs> can I just say? Can I just say? I may be like giving everybody a bit of stick, but who's bottom of this league? Me. You know, <laughs> I'm not doing it from the moral high ground here, you know. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't right, have John McEnroe. I didn't have John McEnroe loaded up in time. Watford or Man United? Sorry, say that again. Who's going to be up for it the most, Watford or Man United? Well, if you follow my predictions, I'm hoping Manchester United, mate. I'll be honest with you. Because Man United will go out, Man United will go out onto the pitch with the same frame of mind they had every week. Because as a top six team, they go out there with the same cockiness as though we're going to win the game. Now your teams down the bottom and the teams that want to do it want to beat the teams like Manchester United. So, so there's a thin line, Steve, is there not between cockiness and confidence? Yeah, you, you know. You look at Man United, and Man United are not playing as a team. They're playing as individuals. And I think that will, will continue while Oli's there because he can't put a system across for Man United players to play to because they, they won't do it. Ronaldo won't do it. Pogba won't do it. Fernandes won't do it. So then you've got three or four other players in the team that give the ball to players when they shouldn't give them to him just because of the, the, the names they are. And they've lost all their continuity, if that makes sense. Mm, yeah. So, to me, yeah. you know, 
I'd like to play against Manchester United every week because you've got <laughs> you feel like you've got a chance. You feel like so would I, because it's the only team that we've really beaten well this season. I mean, so, you know, you've got your teams like Chelsea, which you wouldn't want to face because yeah. of where they're playing. You wouldn't want to play West Ham every week, but you would want to play against Manchester United at the moment because you know you've got a chance against Manchester United. Yes, that is true. Whereas, you, you, know, are, you are going to enjoy next week if Watford win, aren't you? Oh, two right away, mate. Two right away. <laughs> Ah, I might not invite in. you on there. I might send you the wrong link next week. <laughs> I'll sit in Nossie, my underpants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, on that point, uh, Wolves, West Ham, a bit of a difference of opinion there. You guys think that it's going to be a West Ham win. I've gone for the draw. But we all agreed that Liverpool, even, even Steve agreed on this one, Liverpool are going to be Arsenal and Man City are going to be Everton. And then at the end, Steve thinks that Leeds are going to do a job on Tottenham. And Brad went against his hatred of Tottenham and thinks that they, they are going to win. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for that. Steve, I hope you have a really bad week with your predictions because you've overtaken <laughs> me. <laughs> I, I need to try and do something to turn this round. Uh, but thank you so much for coming on. Glad to see you weren't stuck in the toilet again this, this week. <laughs> well, if I do bad this week, I'll be back in the toilet next week. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. Brilliant. Take care and thanks very much, mate. All the best. Cheers. Good night. Thank, thank you. you. Right. Yeah, Steve. Um, all right. Thanks to uh, thanks to Steve for that. There, great guy. Um, I, I still I still think he's mad going for Watford, but there you go. He'll he'll, he'll show me up next week. I'm sure. If yeah. I'm not. If 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 I say that I've got bad internet connection next week, Brad, you'll know why. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure I won't let you forget it, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant, mate. And all the best. Thanks very much. And I will see you. Saturday night, well, well Saturday yes. afternoon. Yes, yes, Saturday afternoon. It's Three not quite the same Saturday afternoon. afternoon's all right for fighting. Yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll be. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be a weird one. I don't, I'm not. Half twelve doesn't really work for, for on 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 a Saturday, does it? Really? No. Um. Not at all. A because Leicester don't like playing and. and he, he kind of buggers us up for uh, like probably like a half three start when the three o'clocks kicked off. Yes, yeah. So that yeah. that'd be an interesting one. At least we do some live score updates. See, we can be like back to the day. That's it. See, thinking, thinking there, we can be like final score, but with no red button to press to tune into us. We just appear on your screens with a notification. <laughs> anyway, mate, all the best. Have a good, uh, have a good next couple of days. And um, if you've got any more quizzes coming up, good luck with those. And I will see you. I say, I think I've got. I think it'll be about three o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Hopefully, take care, but have a good one, Andrew. Mate, see you later. Cheers now. Bye bye. Thanks to uh, thanks to Brad there. And again, my button's not working. I'm having problems with my buttons. I tell you, I don't know. It's my age. <laughs> I'm buttonless today. But thanks very much, guys. Um, that was the prediction show. And um, a quick roundup straight after. Hello, this. Matt Elliott here. Hi, Alan Smith here. Hey, guys, Ian Hume here. Hi, everybody, Jerry Taggart here. Be sure to watch Chris and Leicester Till I Die TV for all the latest Leicester City news and information. You can also subscribe on YouTube and various social media channels for the latest updates and news on Leicester City Football Club. Come on, you foxes! Thanks to Dan. I like that. Thanks to Dan for doing that for me. Uh, Dan the man. Um, yeah, so we're going to be back, like I say, on Thursday with the preview show looking at Chelsea. We're back on uh, Nippon's channel uh, tomorrow night, I think, nine o'clock, me and Brad uh, doing a preview on his, on his show. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining in as much as anything. Um, don't forget that if you want to watch us back, it is Lester Till I Die TV. Uh, on YouTube. If you liked it, give the show a thumbs up, please. It all helps. And uh, if you haven't already and you've enjoyed it, please consider subscribing because that definitely does help the, uh, the the channel out. And if you want to listen to us rather than watch us, don't blame you. 
podcast form. We don't go out live on podcast, but we do um, put it up about 10 minutes after the end of the show. And you can find us under Leslie Till I Die on Apple, Spotify, Google, Podcast Addict, Anchor, and your favorite podcast platform. And that is where we are. Thanks very much, Anthony. Um, nice to see you along there. Thanks very much, Jordan. Thanks for coming in just as we're leaving. Uh, but thanks for popping on, mate. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, Jeff, many thanks, Chris, Brad and Steve. Great show and agree with Steve on the Watford win. You just want the laugh as well, don't you? And I know I know what you're doing to me. I know what you're trying to get there, Jeff. All right, Jeff, look, I tell you what, I'll give you one of these as well, Jeff. You deserve it. <laughs> Viewers, I apologize. I'm continue. <laughs> All the way, Jeff, all the way to the Philippines there uh, with that one. And I'm afraid, yes, you uh, you did deserve it. You did deserve it. Anyway, guys, um, you have a, well, it's quarter past ten. Who knew I'm going to turn into a pumpkin soon? But thanks very much, I'll say, to everybody for joining in. Really, really appreciate it. And that's, I say, where you can find us and listen to us. And I will see you 7 o'clock on Friday. Stay safe. Thanks a lot, guys. Goodbye now. Hello, Matt Elliott here. Be sure to watch Lester Till I Die TV on YouTube and follow all their social media platforms for all the latest updates and news on Leicester City Football Club. Thanks for watching Lester Till I Die. This is Chris saying goodbye and see you next time. So, people are on the pitch, they think it's all over. It is battle.